Good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear me clearly. Can I just have some confirmation if you can hear me? Yes, Susan. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. That's good. Um, I hope everyone is well. So I will be taking you for this module introduction to functional areas of management. So what I want us to do today is just to have an introductory class. We won't go into much detail. We just want to um, get to know each other, strategize how we are going to go forward. So um, what I normally propose is that we start with the um, uh what i call i i i've given it a name um study guide study guide lessons where we cover all that you are supposed to know according to your study guide so remember a study guide is just uh, a guide but it gives you a guideline of what it is that you are supposed to know, what it is that you might be uh, examined on. But in the lessons, we go into more detail on uh, that which is in the study guide. Then from there, we also have, um, we also have uh, the KCQ lessons where as soon as your KCQs are out, I will have a lesson with you to give you guidelines on how to answer your KCQs so that you get a hundred percent. We 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 cannot have anything less than a hundred percent on the KCQs. Then also we are going to have exam preparation classes towards the end. Maybe we, we can have uh, about four or so, depending on how fast we are going to move through the study guide. But what I always say is that what is most important in these lessons is uh, getting to prepare for your assignments, or getting to prepare for your exams, sorry. Uh, you guys, you don't have an assignment, right? Am I right? Yes. Okay, so we mainly concentrate on the KCQs and the form preparation. Now, because you do not have an assignment, that actually gives you more pressure to pass the exams. And for you to pass the exams, you need to attend the lessons for the study guide information. For those are the lessons that will give you the flesh of what you put in the exam. What is it that you are supposed to put in the exam when you are faced with such a question? And then the exam preparation classes, they give you the framework, like the, the, the skeleton of what is it that is expected of you in the exam. So combining those two is going to ensure that you pass your exams and you pass them well. We, we don't just want passes. For a module such as this one, you need to have distinctions. So you must have uh, modules where you say, this one, I must get a distinction. And IFM, IFAM is one of those. It's not acceptable to have anything less than that. So if you stick uh, with me, we go through these lessons for this semester. I can assure you, we can get you there. So I'll just go into the uh, summary of your module what it is that we are going to be, to be covering. There are eight units in your module. So the first unit is on management. We are talking about the definition of management. Uh, we are talking about the functions, the levels of management. We are talking about the skills of management, the roles of management. We are going to cover all that in um, the first unit. Then we will also have uh, unit two, which talks about organizing management activities. Um, 
there is a lot here. We talk about the culture of the organization, the division of labor, delegations, and so on. Uh, unit three is on the management structures. We, we are going to talk more about hierarchies within the organization. We have what we call a flat structure. We have what we call uh, the matrix structure and so on. We are going to cover all that. Then unit, um, sorry, unit four, we'll look at marketing management. We are now looking at those functions, the different functions that you find within an organization. So anything that has to do with marketing, we are going to look at it. Then we move on to finance. Um, I'm sure for those who are in a certain workplaces, you already know these uh, being sort of departments, but you cannot work for all these departments at the same time. So you will need to know what is it that they do in finance? What is it that is done in human resources? We'll look at all those in, in more, more detail. Then we will look also at operations management. And of course, because we are living in a technological world, we are going to look at information management. So as I list them like this, it might seem like it's it's, uh, it's not much, but there is a lot, trust me, in each of these, there is a lot. So for today, let's just look at the definitions of management and we look at uh, maybe the, the functions of management if, uh, and if time allows us, we can also look at the concepts, at, um, at the skills that managers need. But firstly, I want us to grasp what management is in more detail. I, I know you, you, you have uh, some knowledge of management. What is management? You, you have managers at your workplaces. You are aspiring to be managers. Some of you are already managers, but we want to look at it in more detail so that as we go forward with this module, we are at the same page. I hope you are able to see when I change the screen. If I'm yes. sharing correctly there. Okay, so we are going to look at a number of definitions of management. I think I've, I've, I've come up with about eight. As much as they are similar, they are also um, trying to cover all the different, um, different angles from which you can look at management. So the first one says management is the process of planning, organizing, leading, and controlling resources to achieve organizational goals effectively and efficiently. I put this one first because I feel that this is the one uh, definition which covers almost everything that has to do with management. So this, this definition, um, it talks about the functions, which is the planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Um, it encompasses setting objectives, uh, bringing together activities, leading people, all those four are covered there. And normally this, um, we call it the POKE functions. Anyway, we'll look into that as we go forwards with the, with the module. Then another definition is that management is an art. It's an art of getting things done through people. Remember the manager himself will rarely do the actual, uh, um, maybe physical work, but they will be managing others. So you, you have to have a certain level of um, skill to get others to do the work while you are just managing them. So when you look at this definition, it brings into play issues that have to do with inspiring people, motivating people, which you have set. Then the other definition is, it's a set of activities and tasks to coordinate 
and oversee the work of others in order to accomplish organizational objectives. It's similar to the previous one. You can see from the illustration there, um, there are two gentlemen who what looks like work um, wearing something formal a suit um, someone is actually singing while they are in class whenever you come for class just remember to mute otherwise we will hear all your stories there we are going to hear all your stories okay so i was saying from that illustration you can see that the manager you don't need anyone to point out if someone was to say to you can you go there and talk to the manager if i was you i would go for the guy in a suit why because the manager gets others to work and they oversee the work you can see he's holding some binoculars there he's overseeing what others are doing um this definition also it emphasizes the uh, role of the manager aligning efforts and resources of um, of the organization. Then we say management. It's the process of making decisions. We are now looking at it from the decision-making level. Remember, if uh, a manager will only be called a manager if they have to make decisions and usually very hard decisions. So it's the process of making decisions and taking actions to achieve the desired outcomes in a dynamic and changing environment. So with this definition, we are looking at the decision-making part of uh, management. And we are also acknowledging that there is need for adaptability when you are a manager, because we are going to come across different scenarios um, complexities, uh, you can't predict what's going to happen tomorrow and so on. So you need to be able to make good decisions in that environment. We are also going to look at um, management, the business environment at some point, then you will see how volatile the business environment can be. Um, where am I? This one? No, the decision making, we have covered this one. The practice of planning, organizing, motivating, controlling resources to achieve uh, uh, preset objectives. I think this one is similar to the first one. So you can see from the illustration, there is an objective that has been set there uh, by illustration of the, the, the bull's eye in a, um, and then the manager is busy directing others to make sure that they hit the bull's eye there. Then as we go through this module, we come across a number of theorists. Theorists are people who have given their line of thought uh, in a particular subject and they've been found to be worthy. So I've listed how some of these um, theorists managed to, to describe management. We have a gentleman called Henry Fayo. We are going to come across him when we look at uh, theories of management. So he said that management is to focus and plan, to organize, to command, to coordinate, and to control. As we go forward with the theory that Henry Fayo had, we are going to see how he came up with that um, with that with that definition. Then we also have uh, Mary Parker Follett. Mary Parker Follett said, it's the art of getting things done through people. Again, this is a theorist that we are going to come across as we start these lessons. We also have Frederick Taylor. We call him the father of scientific management. He said, it's the art of knowing what you want to do and then seeing what it is done in the best and cheapest way. Yeah, that's uh, Taylor. Taylor was so much into uh cutting costs efficiencies and so on then we cover my main authors 
we have um, main authors, main authors, these are um, textbooks that you come across in management uh, by Coons, by Peter Drucker, by Stoner. So I've also put for you the their definitions there. So you are going to go through them as you read through because I will send these slides uh, when we are done. So quickly, just so that we don't look at the definition of management in this introductory class, I just want to go to those four main functions of management. Remember, I spoke of POC. Um, earlier, I spoke of POC. Now, POC is an acronym standing for planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. All these are involved in management. I'm sure you saw that in those definitions, we, we had those um, terms coming through a number of times, the planning, the leading, the controlling, the planning, the leading. Uh, we had uh, so many definitions that had the same issues. So we'll just look through those four um, as quickly as we can. So what is planning? In business management, when you are planning, you are setting goals and creating plans so that you achieve them. So you don't set plans that are not achievable. You don't set plans that are walkovers. You do not set plans that do not serve the purpose of the organization. So you set plans with a purpose in mind. And the aspects that are involved in planning as management to identify what the business and the departments should achieve. Then you plan. You then plan um, the creation of those of those plans. Okay, where you are come up with detailed activities and you are going to need for you the purpose of planning why would you plan as management why don't you by planning because planning it gives you it makes sure that all the efforts that you have, so imagine if you just start uh, running into so many problems and that will be because you did not plan but if you plan you come up with guidelines you come up with a roadmap you come up with with um you know expectations and you then are able to see which resources you need when you need them how you are going to employ those resources remember in an organization we have four main function uh four main resources we have human resources we have financial resources uh we have material resources we are going to look at that i think next week i don't want to go too much into the resources so let me leave that one then the other function is when you are leading as a manager so you, you will notice that as we go through these lessons i'm going to be addressing you as a manager. Why? Because after you cover this course, you will be fit to be a manager in whatever aspect. Because remember, management is a skill that you can learn um, depending, it, it, and it doesn't matter which field you are in. You can still be a manager if you undergo training or uh, skill development in management, which is what we are doing now. So the second function is leading. Now, when you are leading, you are motivating, you are directing the employees to achieve particular goals. You inspire people, you make them want to perform at their best. So when we talk about leading, we are not talking about you forcing people to work. We are talking about you making them want to work. And the purpose of leading is to inspire and to guide the employees towards certain objectives. Then we also have organizing. 
Now, whenever you see the word organizing, I will say this today, you will find that we are still going to say it even in our last lesson after the semester is done. Whenever you see the word organizing, always think of the word resources. Those two words go hand in hand. If you are stuck on anything, if you get a question on organizing, just write the word resources first and then you start from there. So when you are organizing, you are bringing together the resources. We are developing structures for resources. When I say resource development, I'm saying the allocation of resources. How many people do you need in this department? How much money is needed in that department? How much uh, machinery should we buy for this, uh, for this coming manufacturing year? What technologies do we need to improve on? That is what we mean when we talk of organizing. So the purpose of organizing is to ensure efficient and effective utilization of resources so that you achieve goals. Then lastly, we have controlling. Now with controlling, it's made up of four um, main, um, four main steps, which are that first you set your standards, whatever the case, uh, you see, as we go through the exam preparation, we normally do that by going through past examination papers. Now, you will see that whatever question is asked on controlling, you can always apply these four steps. You set the standard, you measure the, the current performance, you compare the standard that you want versus the actual performance, and then you take corrective action. That is controlling. As long as you can remember those four, and I'm going to make sure that you remember them because we will do this through the exam questions. We will do it through um, answering of um, possible like, likely questions. And this is a very uh, likely question to come in the exam that has to do with controlling. So you need to know these four steps. And the purpose of controlling is to ensure that the organizational goals and standards are achieved. And not only are they achieved, but they are also maintained. Okay. Are there any questions on planning, leading, organizing, and controlling? And the definitions of management. Even if it's not a question, an addition, something that maybe I left out, something that came into your mind, an example, as I was presenting. Any questions before I move on to the uh, management levels and skills? You don't need to raise your hand. In my classes, you just unmute and you speak. Is everything making sense? Am I clear enough? Because when people don't ask, it's either they didn't understand anything or they understood something. Yes, yes, all good. Hello. <laughs> all good. All so good. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lola. All right. So let me just go on to the management um to the management levels and skills i skipped the organization the organizational resources uh deliberately i'm going to cover them where i feel that they will be better understood so i left them out deliberately so in a tip three levels in top management we are money. Uh, Matome says 
my sound keeps disappearing. Is that for everyone or is there anyone who's been hearing me yes. clearly? Now what's happening breaking. with me too? Yes, Susan. I was losing you too. Is it? Uh, it losing must me. be the network. It must be the network, but I'm sure the recording will be fine. So you can always ask for the recording. Um, actually, they will give you now. the recording. They will give you the recording. Uh, so in that case, if my network is is uh, sketchy today, uh, okay, let me just try to push on. So I was saying that there are three levels of management. Now, the first level of management, the top managers, I'm starting from the bottom of that page. I'm starting from the bottom of that page. Please just give me a moment. Okay, can you hear me, guys? Yes, I'm I can hear okay. you. Okay. Yes. I was saying, let's start from the bottom of the page going upwards. So we have the top managers um, who are responsible for the overall management of the whole organization. These ones, their main task is to come up with the policies and to guide the organization. Then we also have middle managers. And these ones, they direct the activities that implement the policies that were set by the top management. So the top management comes up with policies, they come up with visions, then the middle managers are there to make sure that those uh, policies are implemented, those visions are met. And then the first line managers, they direct the employees who, um, who do the actual work. That's the first line. Um, or lower level management. Now, the lower level management, this is the only level of management that is not in charge of another manage, management level. So supervisors will only direct and supervise um, lower level employees, but they will not have any manager reporting to them. Then the middle managers will have the supervisors or the lower level management reporting to them, and the top management will have both the middle managers and the first line managers reporting to them. I think this is going to make more sense as we go forward. Um, I've put for you uh, just uh, some examples of terms that can be there to describe these levels of management. So for top managers, depending on the size of the organization, you can have chief executive officer, you can have general manager, uh, depending how big the organization is. With middle managers, it's usually the functional managers, meaning they are in charge of a particular field. So you can have human resources manager, marketing manager, operations manager, production, and so on. Then the first line, it's the supervisors. So here are the titles there um, of the different levels of management, CEO, MD, the chief financial officer, the partners, especially in law firms, they have partners as the top management level you have you can have the board of directors middle managers i've explained these and the lower level managers but what is it that is required for one to be a manager what skills do they need this is just an illustration of those um three levels of management and how everyone else the operational employees come below those three levels so if you want to be a manager, if you want to be a first line manager or a middle manager or a top manager, what skills do you need to have? You, you need to know all this. 
Because as you set forward your vision to say, I would want to be in charge of an operational team. So I would want to be a supervisor manager. You must know what skills you must have. So I'll just look at the skills of managers and then stop there. So the first skill that you need as a manager is what we call the conceptual skills. Now the conceptual skills as you can see from the illustration, these are the skills that have to do with thinking strategically. You must be able to have a holistic view of the organization to be able to see how each part of the organization links with the other. And the importance of this um, skill is that if a manager has got strong conceptual skills, they can see the bigger picture. They can analyze situations. They can make informed decisions. Even um, from their office, they will be able to make decisions that will uh, impact positively on the whole organization. Then I've put a list for you there on the examples of conceptual skills. Then we have what we call the human skills. Now the human or interpersonal skills these relate to how a manager is able to work with other people, is able to understand the emotions of other people, and is able to communicate with others. You cannot be a manager without having some human skills or some conceptual skills. So the, the examples there, of the human skills, we have leadership, we have teamwork, conflict resolution, motivation, and so on. Then lastly, we have what we call technical skills. Now the technical skills, they involve your skill or your proficiency, your expertise in a specific field. <laughs> okay. So it could be you are an expert in a certain field, then those are what we call technical skills, your ability to do a, a certain work in a certain field and to do it with proficiency. So the importance is that the manager needs these skills so that they are able to understand and perform the tasks which um, under their area of responsibility. There is nothing that is more uh, useless like a manager who doesn't know the actual work that is being done. Imagine they are trying to be your manager and they don't know anything about what you are doing. Then it becomes uh, sort of pointless. So how do these skills of management that I've said if you noticed, there were three levels of management and then there were three types of skills. So there is a reason for that because these two are linked. The lower level management usually need to have more technical skills. The middle management usually need to have more human skills and the top management need to have more conceptual skills. This is why I've presented these two one after the other. So um, I just want to go to this slide. I'm going to skip those three. Okay, or maybe let me just pull it here. So you can see the um, uh, top management, middle management, and lower management. You can see their responsibility there. Now that responsibility is the one which determines the skill that they need. So the top management is responsible for the overall responsibility of the organization. This is why they need conceptual skills. You saw on the, on, on the illustration on conceptual skills, someone was thinking very hard. They were thinking about a lot of things, mm -hmm. trying to connect one to the other and so on. That is what a top manager needs. Then a middle manager needs to be able to, is responsible for specific departments. And this is why they need human skills. 
then the lower management need to have technical skills. Why? Because they are responsible for the departmental sections or subsections, the actual um, work lines within an organization. So I've put for you again the main function. This this uh, diagram here it came from your study guide. I'm sure. Um, I think it came from your study guide. If someone has got the study guide open, you can just check. Hi. The previous one. Maybe the previous one. Oh, it's not in this one. Okay. I wanted to ask for the page number. If, if it's in this uh, current study guide. All right, so the main function of top management is strategic thinking, strategic management, strategic, anything that has to do with strategic. Remember strategic, we are talking about long-term. We are talking about where will the company be in 20 years time. The top manager, the CEO is not worried that you came to work five minutes late. He is not worried that you you broke um you broke something as you were working. He's not worried about he is worried about the long term of the organization. It is the supervisor who is worried about the day-to-day -day activities. And then the middle manager is worried about the medium term, medium term of the organization. Lower management worried about the short term. They set goals. So what we are saying is top management can set, let's say, for example, five-year goals. They say in five years, we want our um, organization to be the leading, to be the leading organization in this industry, right? It's just an example. They say uh, maybe they want to, uh, they want to grow the market share. They want to grow the market share by 50%. That is strategic thinking. That is top management. They'll sit in a meeting and come back and tell you that we want to increase our market by 50% in the next five years. Then the middle managers will then sit down and say, hey, you know what? You remember what those top managers were saying? How can we achieve that? Then the human resources manager will say, I'm going to employ... Um, People, we have skills in this in marketing because we, we are going to, we want to take over the market. Then the production manager is going to say, in my department, I'm going to increase quality so that we are able to get more of the market. Then the, um, the, the finance manager is going to say, okay, I'm going to give you, uh, to give all of, all of you in the different departments funds so that you are able to meet these objectives. You see that. So middle managers have interpreted what the top management put in place. And then we go to the lower management. Now the lower management is worried with the day-to-day -day task. In the marketing department, if the marketing manager said, I'm going to employ more sales assistants, the lower manage ma management is the one who is going to say, each assistant, as you start the work day, at the end of the day, I need you to have found 10 customers because this is now the actual work being done. So do you see how it moved the same vision? It moved from strategic management to short-term management. The lower level manager in the human um, resources department, the supervisor is going to say, those who are in charge of recruitment how many new people did you employ for sales? Because we want to increase our sales. This is the day-to-day -day task now. Okay. Then going back to the skills, I want you to look on the far right of the screen. You see where there are colors there, the pink, the, um, is that orange or yellow? It's orange, right? And then the purple. Do you see that? It's like a box there? Yes. Yes. Okay. So and I the just want to explain amber. that part. Sorry? <laughs> the yellowish is amber. 
<laughs> oh, it's called Ember. Ah, yeah. Guys, come on. Oh, Any did artist colors will know that. So many. You know, when I was starting school many, many years ago, we used to have basic colors. There was green, blue, yellow, red. Now there is Ember. There is uh, uh, so many shades of uh, the, even the pink. There is now pink. There is hot pink. There is baby pink. There is, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So the top management, that box is illustrating the level at which they need to have those skills. Remember I said each manager needs to have the three skills. Now with those three skills, the top management, do you see how big the box of conceptual skills is? I think it's like half or even more than half there. So a top manager needs more conceptual skills. They need a bit of human relations skills and a little bit of technical skills. So this is why you find the CEO of a um, company, maybe that that uh, company that does what? A company that sews clothes, a tailoring company. They might not be very good at tailoring, but they should have so a bit of knowledge on tailoring. You shouldn't go to them and talk about threads and they are clueless. They should know threads, they should know fabric, they should know this and that. But more of the skills that we need from the top manager is conceptual. The rest of the page, I'm going to explain in our next lesson, the responsibility, the main function, the percentage is at the bottom there. Just leave them out. Let's look at the middle manager with regards to the colors. Do you see how big the ember now is? Now this is a middle manager. They need more human skills. A bit of conceptual skill, a bit of technical skill, but they need more human skills. They need to relate more with others. They need to build relations, networks. They, this is how they can achieve their work more. And then we go to the lowest level of management and you see that the supervisor needs to have a lot of technical skill. This is why you find if someone is stuck with their work, they call the supervisor and say, hey, I'm stuck here. Say, I don't know how to do this. And the supervisor should be able, a supervisor should be an expert in that field. They shouldn't come to you and say, ah, I also don't know how to do this. No, no, no. They should be experts. And then they also need a bit of human skills because they work with people. And they must have just a little bit of conceptual skills. They don't have to see the bigger picture, but they need a little bit of conceptual skills. So this is how the level of management relates to the skill of management. Was that clear to this point, up to this point? Yes, Susan. Okay, all right. So what I'll do, for today, I'll end here. The rest of those diagrams, I'll explain them in the next lesson. And also, this is uh, the one that you are seeing on your screen. It's an overall summary of what we have done today. So I'm going to explain that one in the next class. Are there any questions on the link between level of management and skill of management? Okay, any comments? Anything that you'd want to add? Anything that you'd want to ask concerning even not the content that we were covering, maybe concerning how we are going to go forward with these lessons? Any question at all? We all good. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to, uh... oh. I think I'm in the wrong class. But yeah, the class was very informative because a lot of things I can, I can relate to as the middle okay. manager. <laughs> oh, you are a middle manager at your workplace? Yes, yes. Ah, so we are going to perfect your skills, my friend. By the time we are done with this module, even your 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 your, your subordinates, the supervisors, they will come to you and say, hey, what has been happening? You are now so much better. <laughs> thank you so much Suzanne. okay so guys i'm not sure which days we are going to be meeting 
we were supposed to meet yesterday. Unfortunately, yesterday I was traveling. So I felt that um, I won't give you as much attention. That's why I asked to do the introductory today. So um, we are going to be given by VUT the day that we are going to be meeting. And then we will start our lessons. This was just introductory. Not much today. I hope to see you next week. Please attend next week's lesson as we finish off what we started today. Okay. If Thanks, there are no other questions. Thanks, Susan. Thank you, there Susan. are no other questions. Have a good night. Thank you yes, guys for you. attending. Bye. 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 Bye.